You're listening to The Joe Cronin Show, a wrestling podcast with attitude. Oh, we're almost uh, ready for SmackDown here. It's going to be a fun SmackDown, I hope. Maybe not. I don't know. Already spoilers coming out from SmackDown, but I mean, they're not really spoilers because when I was looking at ticket prices... Since I legitimately am 25 minutes away from the Dunkin' Donuts Center. I live 25 minutes away from the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Rhode Island. And um, just right over the border here in Massachusetts. And I was looking at ticket prices because I started thinking maybe I'll drop down there and I'll take my video camera and I'll act weird and do some stuff. And I really should go because I think it'd be funny, but I'm looks like I'm not going to be. There's just too much shit to do, man. I'm fixing the house. I'm working on stuff. Stuff's going wrong left and right. It's just a big mess. I haven't mowed the lawn yet. The grass is growing. There's just so much there's just so much stuff to do. That being said, tonight, spoiler sort of, but not really, Drew McIntyre is going to be there. Nobody cares. Like I mean I mean I love Drew McIntyre, but nobody's going to be like, "Oh no, he spoiled it for me. Drew McIntyre is here. I didn't know that." You know, it's you know, it's it's literally reported all over the site too. So that's that's come out as a spoiler from some of the wrestling, um, you know, websites and, and whatever else. But it's not to me. It's not really much of a spoiler. It says it literally on the website. So Drew Drew Mac Drew McIntyre will be there tonight. But this cold, I'm still sick, and it's still messing with my speech. Sometimes uh, we'll be there. Um, SmackDown spoiler for tonight. That's all over the place. That's obviously Drew Galloway. Not a big deal. Uh, Mick Foley talking about the reaction last night to the 24-7 title. It's kind of funny. He he blames himself. It's not his fault. Not his fault. Monday Night Raw tonight. How significant was it to introduce that title this evening? I think it was really significant. I remember the element of fun. You know, I mean, you know, we called it a hardcore title then, and there <laughs> were the elements of all that craziness and danger. But it was also a really fun experience. <laughs> and so I think we're trying to bring a little bit of that magic back. And uh, their guys always ready. They're already having fun doing it, right? Having the 24/7 role with the hardcore title, now seeing it with the 24/7 championship, the ch a surprise and a lot of fun. And uh, and I think it's uh, something that fans will. They were disappointed when I didn't unveil the hardcore title, you know. Yeah. But you can't turn back those hands of time. Uh, we can introduce something that's new and exciting that has elements of that hardcore title. Uh, yeah, it's fresh, and I think uh, people will really be enjoying it. So again, Mick Foley, you know, believes obviously, like, like, like we kind of believe that that basically people were upset that you know it wasn't the hardcore title that was the main issue that a lot of people had with it, and then and then how they executed it after that. So right from there, it was kind of like a failure for that moment. Hopefully, it will get better. I love what our truth's been doing with this belt today. Today, our truth has been hilarious on Twitter. This is exactly why I brought up bringing back the hardcore title, or rather bringing in a 24-7 title. This is why I pitch, I was pitching this for a while, because of videos like this. A quick update. Yeah, I still got the European Championship. I still got it. Now, I'm seeing wanted posters. I'm hearing everybody's looking for me. I'm seeing all these this tweeting going on on Twitter. Everybody's looking for me. Y'all need to leave me alone. Y'all need to mind y'all own business. I'm trying to get to SmackDown to talk to Vince McMahon. I need to talk to Shane. I need to talk to somebody. Because we need to change the stipulations <laughs> about this European championship that can be defended 24-7. You see what I'm saying? So I'm bringing it to SmackDown, but y'all need to behave y'all selves. You know what I'm saying? Everybody need to be trying to roll me up, trying to pin me, trying to do nothing to me right now. Because I'm coming to talk and handle some business. That's why I'm right now in the middle of nowhere. Y'all looking for me? Don't nobody want me but my wife, my kids, and little <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> this European championship <laughs> needs me. Dude, I mean, he's killing it already. That's funny stuff, man. It's stupid, but it's funny, man. That's the whole point. That's what the point of this was. You know what I mean? But WWE is such a joke right now that like little jokes like this don't really go over as well because people are sick of like the jokes uh, of like everything being so PG and a joke, you know? And I think that that's uh, somebody on Twitter really summed it up, like put that in a context, in a words that were really well spoken and well done. And I don't remember who that is. Cause I want to give them credit 
Maybe I'll know by tonight by SmackDown and I'll be able to show that tweet. I'm not sure. Yeah, we found out uh, Ashley Mazzaro passed away from suicide. She ha she hung herself apparently, which is awful. So that is just horrific, uh, tragic news. Um, there's also a big report breaking all over the place about part of her lawsuit was had to do with allegedly that Vince McMahon told her not to bring up the fact that she was raped in the military or, or something or other like that. And she, so, I mean, I, I mean, to me, I think one of the reasons why Vince McMahon would say, let's, you know, don't bring that up is because, you know, you don't want all that associated with what's going on. It could hurt her maybe. And maybe he was looking out for her best interest or maybe he was being a dick. I don't know. I don't know what the context of that is, nor have I read that report yet. So I don't want to speak on it yet. Um, but I am getting lots of tweets about WWE are scumbags and Vince McMahon's a scumbag for what happened with Ashley Mazzaro. So apparently it's not good. And I have not read that yet. I do. I just want to make everybody aware that I am aware of it and I have the links and I have the stories and I will read them. But right now I have not still. So I don't know. Um, um, but that's it. It's just awful news that she was, uh, you know, that's what we thought. But anyway, it's terrible. AEW released Adam Page versus Pac, the match from England. They released the video of that. So you can actually watch that because they, you know, they're not doing the match at the show, it seems. So that has been released. I mean, uh, <laughs> I haven't got any notes or anything, but I'm well aware of how this thing started. Back at the, back at the all, oh, sorry. Page is trying to. Baseball slide to the outside. Pack I just watched a little bit of it. Yeah, it's got full commentary on it. It's on the AEW channel. Man, that would have been fun to call that one. What a great, what a great show. What a great match. I've been putting up some goofy commentary uh, that I've done all over Twitter and uh, Instagram. If you guys want to laugh at some of that or enjoy it, I don't know. I'm just very. I was being very intense. I I, I just wanted to have fun and uh, do commentary. Uh, that's about it uh, for that. Booker T says the war is on. Between WWE and AEW, I think everybody knows that. And um, I don't know if this is a clip we have of him saying this or not, but let's see what he has to say. Uh, this is, of course, um, the Hall of the Hall of Fame with Booker T and Brad Gilmore. Do their own thing. That would be the smart thing to do because because WWE got the most talent in the world. Um, we, we got we got everybody on the roster. And and it wouldn't be that hard to actually, you know, flip the script and go a different route. And Yo, where do I get that Booker T necklace that's glowing? Where do I get that whatever he's got with the duck hanging from it? And <laughs> if need be. I mean, because the ricochets, you know, on, on, the, on the roster, man, those guys can go, man. Um, you know. The Roman Reigns is uh, on that on that roster. Seth Rollins, man, those guys, those guys, those those guys, can, those guys can really flat out and go. They really can. Alistair Black. I mean, Black. Um, the Kingstons. Are the, these guys can actually really, really go. Um, you know, and and you say, do we want to let do we want to let them loose? That's the question. Yeah. You know, and 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 that happened. And I was a part of that happening. Um, back um, when you know when WCW. Um, what um, uh, and man, those guys would be blood sweat and tears man yeah i mean i think it's um i think it's evident that this uh, is on but we'll see what that what that entails i mean there's a lot of people a lot of wwe guys that look at the AEW roster and they say why am i supposed to pay attention to this what's going on that i need to know about and they'll look at the roster and they'll just say I, uh, these guys look like jobbers to me and i'm not saying they are i'm not saying that i'm just telling you what some of the casual wwe fans who maybe are curious and check out the AEW website. They say, who the hell are these guys? They know Jericho and maybe they sort of have heard of Kenny Omega and they know Cody Rhodes a bit. And then, you know, everything else, they, they just kind of look at it and they always say, who are, it just looks like 205 Live to them. So that's the problem. Is AEW going to be able to reach out and grab some of those people and bring those people in? That is the issue. Now there's uh, this other issue now of the third hour of Raw. The other night, Mick Foley said that they're introducing the 24-hour championship, but then he made some kind of comment that was weird about it, it like the third hour of Raw was going to feature the belt or something like that. What I don't understand is if they're going to have this 
24-7 title, obviously this 24-7 on Raw, why did Mick Foley reference the third hour of Raw with the belt? Why would you have a 24-hour title that can only be defended during the third hour of Raw? I don't quite understand that. <laughs> like, I mean, like, I'm very confused with what they said. And once again, WWE is ambiguous with rules and very weird about their own rules and creations to where even they don't know what it is. And so I don't know what it is. Um, And I don't quite get it. Listen to this. Seven days a week. And so it is with that spirit, because starting tonight, right now, right here in Albany, New York, we are going to crown our first 24-7 champion. We're going to have ourselves what I like to call a scramble. I'm going to remove myself from the situation. I asked the superstars to line up. Now, you may ask yourself, is this open to all of the superstars? Now, one of the things about this is, as it became the third hour of Raw last night, we saw the, the lights were turned off. All those goofy red and LED lights that light up the crowd and make everything look really... At first, it seemed cool like years ago. It was like, wow, the lighting is so awesome. But then it became kind of lame. I don't know. It's like too pristine everywhere. And so the third hour of Raw, apparently, for the last night, for the last hour of Raw, the um, that, the, that lighting stayed off, apparently, if you noticed it. And the lighting stayed dim and dark, um, kind of like old times. And so you see that it's it's dark back here. The, the crowd was lit up a little bit around the ring, but it was a different atmosphere. And it was something that happened, you know, just minutes before. The, you know, he unveiled the title. There was the crowd lit up. This is what it looked like. And then all of a sudden, the minute it turned, I believe when it turned the third hour of Raw, the lights were dimmed and you saw the difference in the lighting and the crowd and whatever else. And I don't want to play it because they, they say things are going to get downright mean and nasty. Problem is, the idea of the lighting going down in the darkness and everything was really good. That was like, wow, what does that mean? Things are going to get gritty. It's going to get nasty and, and a little bit dirty and all that stuff. However, then the wrestlers came out like a goddamn Benny Hill show. You know, they came out like a circus cartoon. And unfortunately, you went for gritty and nasty, but what you ended up seeing was absurd, ridiculous, and comedic. So I don't quite understand the correlation of that. And I don't know if that will be every week. I mean, for all we know, it goes right back to normal next week, and we don't know what's going on. Other people speculating that the third hour would be like TV 14 or something. Uh, you know, it's no, I, I doubt any of that. Unfortunately for WWE, because that's what they wanted. Now, if you were going to go gritty and you were going to go dark and you were going to dim the lights down and say everything was dirty, you would pull out the hardcore championship. And then you would literally have a hardcore match. And Mick Foley could have said this. Here's how you could have booked it better, WWE. Since I gave you the damn 24-7 uh, pitch over and over again the last year. What you should have said, Mick Foley is they should have opened up the hardcore belt. Ladies and gentlemen, the hardcore or the extreme 24-7 champ hour championship. Uh, and it could have been like a mix of the hardcore 24-7 title. They could have said hardcore slash 24-7 and it could have fuck it could have been a goddamn razor blade. I don't know. But then Mick Foley could have said, and we're gonna decide who wins this belt. The fir the, who the first champion of this belt is going to be, and here's how we're going to do it. The first four competitors to enter this ring right now will be in a fatal four-way uh, match for this title. And once there is a first-time champion, then from then on, the championship can be defended at any time, anywhere, any place. So the minute that the champion wins the title, someone becomes champion, 
This title will then be live for anybody, anywhere, anytime, as long as there's a referee. I'm very familiar with that rule. Let's look back a year and a half ago. Listen, I'll put this thing up anytime, anywhere, any place. As long as there's a ref around. Well, there's, there's a referee around, but here's the... I'll put this thing up anytime, anywhere, any place. As long as there's a ref around. I don't want your damn bell! I don't want your damn bell! But... Yep. Well, there you go. I mean, you know, anyway, I don't even know where we were. The fact of the matter is they did it completely wrong. They should have had all the guys run to the ring. Then they should have had a, a, a match that meant something for the first ever champion. And then from then on, it should have been on. And then you could have done Titus or whoever won it, you know, and they should have had somebody win it who is really, I don't know, a little more than, you know, I, I love Titus, but Titus is seen as a jobber, as catering and all that stuff. So it would have been nice if maybe somebody had won it like it meant something for a second. Um, you know, you even could have done something, and not Kevin Owens, but if Kevin Owens had nothing to do, now I'm just giving this as an example. You said anybody, anywhere can show up and do anything, you know, so they should have had maybe even a guy from NXT show up and win it. Like, holy crap, like, you know. And then maybe they could have had people running out from the locker room to try to attack him and everything and someone roll him up. And he gets away, though. You know what I mean? And he gets away, gets to the car. I mean, he, you know, I don't know. There could have been so many different things that they did. I mean, I kind of like what they did. It was funny. That's the whole point of the damn thing. But you got to try to not make it funny because it's already funny in and of itself, right? The whole idea of it, you know, winning it anywhere and all these other things, that's already, like, kind of goofy, right? So they, they needed to try to make it really serious and intense and hardcore-ish and let the funny happen on its own because that's it's obvious that it's going to be that way. But instead, it just appeared goofy right from the beginning, and I just think that that's unfortunate for what could have been. Um, Cesaro has music finally. This is kind of the push we wanted for him like three years ago. But uh, he tweet, uh, you know, he's hopefully he's doing all right. Um, Reigns also said Reigns went on Twitter this week uh, to fire shots at Shane McMahon. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about Roman versus Shane. Nobody gives a damn about that. I know I don't. Maybe the small portion of casual Roman fans do. I certainly do not give a damn about this. Roman Reigns should have been heel about two to three years ago. He's about three years too late on his heel turn. He's a poor man's John Cena. He cannot speak on the mic like John Cena. When John Cena gets on the mic, John Cena releases passion, intensity, and sometimes good points. I don't even I'm not even a Cena fan, really. I don't even like Cena that much. But damn, you respect Cena a lot more when you see what Roman puts out there. Oh man, I'm the big dog. Oh. Maybe someone needs to beat your bitch ass. Like, that's all Roman can say. Like, that's all he can do is the whole... Roman Reigns is the Fast and the Furious, and John Cena is like... I don't know. James Bond. You know, I, I don't know. Name an action movie that's actually good. I hate the Fast and the Furious movies. Uh, Transformers. I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just... It's awful. Let's put it that way. He just says these stupid lines... He like says Arnold Schwarzenegger lines, but he sucks. Like, imagine if he was if he was Arnold Schwarzenegger and he could actually say that type of stuff, like, I'm going to beat your ass and then stuff your head in your asshole and kick you down the ramp into the fans so they can devour your carcass. Like, you know, it'd be that'd be that stuff would be funny. That was like Ryback. 
when when Ryback was a heel, he was better on the mic than Reigns. He was funny. Ryback was better than Reigns on the mic. Dude, think about that. Like, seriously, think about that. I'm sorry. Think about that. That's that's just bad. It's really bad. I don't know what to tell you anymore about this company. But it, everything they do is wrong. And listen, sometimes they do things that are that are good or, like, decent or, like, they kind of got the right idea. But they always mess it up. And, and the thing I've noticed, that if WWE doesn't have a great idea, execute it properly, follow through with it, and make it awesome, all of those things, if they don't hit on everything, it gets booed. It gets ruined. Because fans right now, if you're not perfect, they boo. Or they're bored. You need to be perfect on every decision. And not only is WWE not perfect on every decision... But if there are four or five key elements that need to happen, they hit usually on maybe one, right? Like, hey, good idea, but then you did this, this, and this, and that, and now it's bad. If they could even hit on three or four of the ideas, but they can't. They, they bring out a new title, which nobody wants. However, I did say, I've said this a million times, do we need a new title? No! A TV title would be retarded. They already have a United States Championship, an Intercontinental Championship that are underutilized and improperly utilized. Why would you bring a TV title onto the scene? Absolutely no. The only title that I would accept is a hardcore title or a 24-7 title because you could do stuff with that on social media and have a good time. That is the only belt that I would, I would accept. And I said that, and that's what started my rant about bringing it back. So, right from the beginning, in my opinion, okay idea, nobody asked for it, but okay, I did, but okay, no, all right, okay idea, we'll see where they go with this. Okay, the belt, the design didn't work, most people didn't like the design, so that's one thing they did wrong. The way they unveiled it was definitely wrong, because people thought Mick Foley was unveiling the, um, the hardcore title, and I understand the tie-in with Mick Foley, I said it before they did it that there was this tie-in, whether it's hardcore or 24-7, both had that rule, so McFoley introducing it makes sense, I get it, but you baited the crowd. The crowd is clearly looking for something. They're looking for the old days. They're looking for the Attitude Era. They're looking for badass stuff. They are looking for that. Now I know they're looking for that. Before it was like, don't ever do Attitude. Don't do that. You can't do it. Just write a better show every week. And that's the thing WWE doesn't understand. You can't just bring back little artifacts from back in the day. Your product isn't like that anymore. And, and the fans don't just want surprises to be surprised. The fans want to see where things are going, predict it, and then it happen. And, and they'd be excited about it. They, they, people almost don't like swerves anymore. They want surprises, they do, but it's different. Like I can't explain it. They want swerves as long as the swerve is something that they like and they want. They don't want Brock Lesnar coming down to win the money in the bank. And it's not giving you the heel heat anymore the right way. It's Things are just not working the way they used to work. WWE needs to figure out a way to, to get heel heat and to have faces and and to have week-to-week -week shows that make sense again. But to do that, they really have to throw out all the old ways of operating because these fans aren't reacting to wrestling the way they used to. The, the things are just different. That's why nothing is working right now. And that that and I don't I don't even have it figured out yet. I'm not I'm still not sure 100 percent It would take some brainstorming, sitting around at a conference meeting, trying to figure out what that is, trying to figure out the new formula of wrestling fans because it is different. It is different. There is no doubt about it. It is different. And part of that would be giving the crowd what they want, but without giving the crowd what they want or, or giving the crowd something to cheer about, something to really be angry about, but give it a payoff as well. You know, I think, I think more often than not, you need to pay back quicker too. I think the fans aren't handling long drawn out storylines as well either, but WWE can't even execute those. They can't even execute short ones. So that's the thing. Okay. You cannot execute long drawn out storylines, but yet you try to do it and the fans hate it. So just execute short storylines and they don't even do that. So that's the problem. So you don't execute either one, but clearly you must execute short 
storylines. Like the like Brock Lesnar winning the Money in the Bank was not not good. A way to get Brock Lesnar heel heat to me would be allow somebody to win the Money in Bank that you want to win the Money in the Bank, and then Brock Lesnar all of a sudden gets a match for the Money in the Bank, and then the crowd's like, "What the f? That this is bullshit." We're pissed. This guy, Mustafa Ali, won the money in the bank. Now Brock Lesnar gets a shot at money in the bank. And maybe you could have made that happen because Brock Lesnar went to Vince McMahon and said, Hey, Vince, I'm quitting if you don't give me a shot. And Vince is like, You want a shot? All right, you got a shot at the money in the bank champion for his money in the bank tonight. All, all the crowd would be angry. We would be angry. We'd be all over social media like, This is bullshit. Like, are you kidding me? Like, what's the point in money in the bank if it's just going to have to be defended? All that stuff. And then that very night, Brock Lesnar loses. So you think they're going one way and then loses, and Mustafa holds the thing up and is like, I still have it, that type of deal. And no, I'm not saying I wanted Mustafa to win the money in the bank either because I don't think that'd be a good idea. Based on what I've seen with Kofi Kingston and Becky Lynch, especially with Kofi, it is not a good idea right now to have somebody with great in-ring presence, great wrestling ability, but not... 100% charisma yet. Nothing that, no charisma that's been carried over the airwaves enough to win a money in the bank or win a title. You really need a character to get over first before you can do that. Problem is, even if he did get over as a character, he would then be held back by WWE most likely and it would fizzle out and he wouldn't be allowed to be a character. So I have no idea what the answer is anymore, but it sounds like WWE hurts itself when they actually have someone that breaks through Rusev Day. Um, then they stomp it out and they ruin it. So then they throw that out the window. And then little guys who can flip flop and dip all over the place have great wrestling matches. They get to win stuff because they're great at wrestling, but then they have no personality. So then when they win a title after they win the title, it's kind of like, okay, I'm bored by this guy. But you get a guy like Rusev, everybody chanting Rusev day, Rusev day, Rusev day. Hell yeah, Rusev day. And instead of then deciding we're going to have Rusev push for the title for the next three to four months like fighting people he may even win an intercontinental championship and then after that Rusev is like Rusev wants more Rusev day Rusev on the next Rusev day I say that Rusev will have the WWE world championship and the intercontinental championship ah and the crowd's going crazy Rusev day Rusev day Rusev will not stop until Rusev has all the belts and, and they could have gone and they could have ran with that for six months into a culmination where Rusev has the Intercontinental Championship and then Rusev wins the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, becomes the champion, continues to cut these awesome promos, these charismatic character promos, and, and you know, then he could lose it eventually. You know, but right now you have Kofi Kingston with the belt and he's just like, New Day, baby! And it's like fucking lame to me. Um, but he's okay... And I'm I'm happy that Kofi won and he did what he did, but I really do think they gotta they gotta figure out some new characters. They don't have anything going right now. Um, I think Kofi should have been a great Intercontinental Champion, um, but after seeing him with the belt, he just has doesn't have the flair for the World Champion. I don't know. That's just how I feel, and I rooted for, I rooted for Kofi. I know Daniel Bryan was an okay champion, but never liked him that much on the mic as a face. Um, but Daniel Bryan as a heel was phenomenal. I want Daniel Bryan as a heel to have the, the title again. He was so good as a heel. I am bored right now. Seth Rollins and Kofi are boring me. Seth has more credibility to me, obviously. But Seth should be a heel too, man. He just speaks like a heel. What do you think? I put this belt on and I become blah, blah, blah. Dude, he is a heel. Seth Rollins speaking as a heel was way better. Face Rollins is almost cringy to me. He just doesn't come off. It doesn't seem real. Anyway, those are my opinions. What do you guys think? I will see you tonight for the SmackDown Live review right here on the Joe Cronin Show. If you're new to the channel, guys, I hope you subscribe. And if you like what I do, we don't get paid much in ads, so become a patron. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Morning Madness is coming this week. Me and Leah's podcast coming this week as well. And the Honestly podcast is dropping uh, possibly a little bit later today. So all that stuff coming to Patreon as usual, plus Corrupted this weekend. 
um, please leave it in the comments down below. Leave a like if you like the video. What do you guys think about all this? I'll be reading the comments. And I uh, hope you subscribe if you're new. Share this video all over the place if you can. Reddit, Facebook, whatever. Share this all over the wrestling sites, the communities. Tell everybody about the show if you'd like. And here's some other videos you might have missed from me.